The feud between President Trump and Jim Comey is turning into a ballistic tit-for-tat on the airwaves. Comey defended himself by going on the attack on CNN last night. Do you think that there's any credence to the president's claims that you broke the law when you released your memos? I don't. I uh, hope that won't surprise you. I don't. In fact, I think he's just making stuff up. President Trump returned fire in a phone interview on Fox & Friends this morning. Look, Comey is a leaker and he's a liar. He leaked classified information in order to try and get a special counsel. He also leaked the memos, which are classified. He is guilty of crimes. And if we had a Justice Department that was doing their job... In his Fox News interview with Brett Baer tonight, Comey responded to Trump's accusations. He's just wrong. Facts really do matter, which is why I'm on the show to answer your questions. That memo was unclassified then. It's still unclassified. It's in my book. The FBI cleared that book before it could be published. That's a false statement. Well, let's separate fact from fiction with our expert panel, Congressman Jim Jordan, a member of the House Judiciary Committee and the Oversight Committees, Fox News contributor Byron York, Washington Examiner, Richard Goodstein, a former advisor to President Clinton. Um, all right, Congressman Jordan, a lot mm -hmm. to unpack. Mm -hmm. We've got to get through it all. I want to play for you part of this interview tonight sure. where uh, Brett asked about the Clinton investigation and the comparison. Let's watch. You see the disparity here where people look at how the Clinton case was handled and how the Trump case is handled. Did you tell lawmakers... I don't, I don't see disparity, though. Oh, my goodness. Well, there is a disparity, and the American people see it. Uh, the president's not wrong. He's not making things up. He's not making up the fact that they called up Cheryl Mills and said, hey, Cheryl, what time can we come over and you hand over the emails you want us to have? Cheryl after Mills you? was? Clinton's lawyer and her chief of staff, for goodness sake, and, and a subject of the investigation when the Clinton investigation started. Compare that to the idea that the president's personal lawyer gets his door kicked in. Uh, and the Attorney General of the United States, I don't even think, was consulted. It was run outside of the umbrella of the Russian investigation, the Mueller Special Counsel investigation. And you don't talk to the highest law enforcement officer in the land when you're kicking in the president's lawyer's door? Of course the president should be upset by that kind of treatment. And more importantly, the American people are upset. Byron, uh, there was a moment where they discussed who funded the dossier. I know you've been writing about this. Let's watch. When did you learn that the DNC and Hillary Clinton campaign had funded Christopher Steele's work? Yeah, I still don't know that for a fact. What do you mean? I've only seen it in the media. I never knew exactly which Democrats had funded. I knew it was funded first by Republicans, opposed to Donald. that's not true. I'm sorry? That's not true. That the dossier that Christopher Steele worked on was funded by Republicans? Yeah, my understanding was his work started funded by oppo re as oppo research funded by Republicans. Did you want to know who it was funded by? I wanted to know what I knew, which is it was funded by people politically opposed to Donald Trump. Okay. Which particular opponents wasn't that important well, to me. This was a stunning moment. I mean, he, he, he showed uh, an apparent ignorance of the basic facts of the dossier, which has become one of the most important documents, I think, in the whole. Why? Because Trump. it was the, base, the main basis for the application to spy on Carter Page. That right? also, that's also what Comey and the other intel chiefs briefed President-elect Trump mm -hmm. on, on January 6, 2017, starting the whole fight between Trump and Comey. So it's, it's a hugely important document. He also seemed to kind of repeat a left-wing talking point, that it began with Republicans. And we know, I think anybody who's followed it knows that the Fusion GPS research into Trump's uh, business life began with Republicans. They quit that. And then the Steele dossier was funded, all of it, by Republicans, by Democrats. Is that a little Democrats. shocking, though? But he, you're on a book tour. You've sold like 600,000 books, which is amazing. Uh, it, you wrote a book about this. Yeah. And you're on Brett Baer's show, and you're, you're like trying to play, oh, well, I don't know, really, if the Democrats, it's what I read in the media, but the Republicans started it. I, I mean, you just wrote a book about this. You were FBI director. You used this document. Yep. Uh, Richard, I, I'm sorry, but that did strike me as quite a stunner. If I can, um, the Congressman made reference to Cheryl Mills, the, uh, Hillary Clinton's lawyer. Donald Trump, who said famously on Air Force One, call my lawyer, Michael Cohen, uh, and famously said during the campaign, if you take the fifth, it's because you're guilty. That's what mob people do. His lawyers taking the fifth. Cheryl Mills never took the fifth. Nobody in the Clinton orbit 
took the fifth. Other than other than the one guy, other than the one guy, she didn't have to take the fifth. She got the immunity. They gave her immunity. Fine. So they they could have given anybody they wanted immunity. Why did they give her immunity? Look, the fact of the matter is the suggestion that there's somehow a comparison between the two. Carter Page was one of five foreign policy advisors that Donald Trump named, and the FBI had reason to believe he was a foreign agent. Excuse me, that's nothing like what we're talking about. Donald Trump went into the Oval Office and gave Russians secrets about the Israelis being embedded and ways in which the, the Islamic so terrorists were going to blow up airplanes. So we're, we're talking about the former FBI director who is on this network tonight who made comments that were, I mean, a, a, a run-of-the-mill pundit on, on any cable network would know the answers to, which I found yeah. unbelievable. I want to play another yep. soundbite. This is on the FISA application itself. And again, Byron, you've been writing about this. Congressman, you've been dissecting this. Let's watch. You called the dossier unverified, salacious. Why did you use that to the FISA court to ask for surveillance for Carter Page? Not only use it, but you led with it. A bulk of that FISA application deals with that dossier. Why? Yeah, that's not my recollection, Brett. And I don't know that the FISA application has been released. My recollection was it was part of a broader mosaic of facts that were laid before the FISA judge to obtain a FISA warrant. There was a lot more than the dossier in the FISA application? My recollection was there was a significant amount of additional material about Page and why there was probable cause to believe he was an agent of a foreign power. Is that true? No. They led with it. When you lead with it, that's your primary evidence that you're taking to have the court. Have you seen the entire no, FISA we have, application? We, we have not, but, but the people why? who have, because they, they won't let us. I asked Christopher Ray under oath, will you show it to us? You can clear all this up. He won't, they won't show it to us. They led with it more Wow. They didn't tell the court two things. They didn't tell the court who paid for it, namely the Democrat National Committee and Clinton campaign. They didn't tell the court that the author of the document, Christopher Steele, had his relationship with the FBI terminated. They didn't tell the court that you, when we go to court, we got to tell them the whole truth, not part of the truth, the whole truth. They didn't do that. Remember that House Intel found out that the dossier was the bulk of it, and separately the Senate Judiciary yes. Committee also found exactly out right. that it was the bulk of it. Uh, he also said he didn't see any bias, uh, Richard, in the Page Struck text. When Page and Struck talked about the insurance policy, they were, uh, you know, they were clearly not wild about Donald Trump. Even that's even been said on other networks. Right. Uh, but he didn't see any bias. Well, again, there were Republicans on this network and others who were saying the same things about Donald Trump during the 2016 campaign that Struck was. Um, Strzok was saying the same things about but Bernie Sanders. He was they, saying the same thing about Bernie Sanders him. and about Eric Holder and so forth. I mean, the fact is they were they were dishing dirt or trashing everybody they could. So to suggest that some, I mean, Strzok was the person who suggested that Comey do the letter that basically was the beginning of the end for Hillary Clinton. So I, I don't think you really see it bias It wasn't there. bias. It was animus towards the president. And Peter Strzok is not just any old person who was criticized. The he's the deputy head of counterintelligence. And you know what? He's been demoted and reassigned for his behavior. Byron, I want to bring up another point. The, the Columbia law professor mm. uh, to whom uh, Comey gave that you know, those memos, two of the six memos. Yeah. And he basically instructed him, get them out there. Uh, now he, we find out, which we didn't know, I didn't know, maybe you all knew this, that he was actually a special consultant to the Justice Department. Yeah. And we now find out that he's actually now operating as Comey's attorney. As Comey's lawyer. How, does, was... Is that relevant or does that give him attorney-client privilege? You can't talk to him about... This well, it helps to understand what Comey was doing in getting these memos out. And this was actually another stunning revelation, not, in, not only in this interview, but also in his town hall last night, which is that Comey does not consider what he did leaking. He has redefined leaking to mean only disclosing classified information. And he believes, he has said several times, that he did not leak when he gave this memo to Dan Richmond for the purpose of Richmond then telling the New York Times about it. Comey maintains that this was not a leak. He also said it couldn't have been a leak because he had left the FBI and was no longer Richard, a government can I employee. Say one? Sure. George Stephanopoulos wrote a book about conversations with Bill Clinton. Scott McClellan wrote a book about conversations with George 
W. Bush. Nobody suggested that those were illegal After leaks. After they were out of office. The, exactly. The and that's precisely the case, that Comey was out of office, and he was no more of a leaker than Stephanopoulos or McClellan was, and nobody, R or D, suggested that they were illegal leakers or liars or should go to Up jail. Up until last week, the Justice Department kept those Comey memos as if they were state secrets. Yeah. Few members of Congress allowed to see them, had to have an FBI, FBI minder with them, no notes, no copies. It's contrary to Justice Department regulations, correct? To yeah, release or trade no or, one or... on Capitol Hill believes this was the only leak Jim Comey did through Daniel Richmond. My guess is there were tons of them. That's why he had this special government employee status, SGE status, had the clearance, was coming to the FBI when he wanted to come. I'm guessing he did lots of leaks. Bring him in. Ask him that. Well, we, we want, want him. I want to do that. Now, no, there's attorney-client privilege. No, you can't bring him in. All right, guys. Phenomenal panel. I had no doubts it would be.